This patch behind me right now is where we came through earlier. And now we can't get back through. I've never had this before. Never done it in a cedar strip. I've never done it when I had to get home. Oh, is it ever cold? This is why we fish right here. That's a good fish. Whoa, nice. Oh my God. That's the bonus of the year for me right there. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Sale, the outdoors superstore. Coleman, the outdoor company. Muscal, proudly Canadian since 1951. Cooper Tires, life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. And Brinscraft Boats, dominate the waters. You see that big honker right there? It's iconic in the Algoma region of Northern Ontario. If you're driving by a Wawa, you gotta visit the goose. Unlike a real goose, however, this sucker weighs a ton. After all, it's made from high-grade steel. Only the best for Wawa. A lot of people don't know this, but the goose was built as a means of commemorating the completion of the Trans-Canada Highway through Northern Ontario. For the past 50 years, travelers have visited remote rugged areas from the easy driving of a modern highway. Quite a heritage. This accessibility has been further enhanced by tire technology, which has taken anglers and outdoorsmen to their favorite backcountry locations throughout the area. Thanks to innovations such as micro-gauge zigzag sighting that multiplies the biting edge for improved traction and handling, Cooper Tires has both the technology and the heritage to keep us on life's road trip for another 50 years. That's why at Fish in Canada, we use Cooper Discover AT3 tires. On today's Fish in Canada show, I'm faced with a unique situation. Although it looks warm and balmy out, it's not. In fact, it's so cold that the lake I'm going to is still losing its ice. Now there's walleye, pike, and speckled trout there, but due to these conditions, I have no idea where to start. Essentially, I'm gonna get on a plane, fly in, assess the situation, and go from there. It's gonna be interesting. At a certain point in the far north of Ontario, you just run out of roads. And that's my situation this week. But remember, where there's a will, there's a way. And when the pavement stops in the north, a float plane becomes the vehicle of choice. Today I'll be flying to Esnagami Lodge, a remote spot that very few people ever get the opportunity to see, let alone fish. From the reports I've heard, the ice is breaking up and has started to recede. This could be perfect timing. Upon arrival, I had a half a day to kill, so I thought I'd go out and scout the lake and the conditions. This time of year and this far north, things can be pretty unpredictable, both with the fishing and the weather. My host at Esnagami Lodge told me to expect the unexpected. Trust me, I believe him. There's my first Esnagami fish. And it is a little, oh my God, it's a white fish. Yeah, that's a bonus fish. It wasn't coming up for him, but a great little fish. <laughs> okay, a little white fish. With only a white fish in the boat and 44 degree water temps, the unexpected has definitely started to kick in. I think it's shifted on us and they were up. Might be able to drop the pot. Close. Yeah, it's, you can't break it through. It's too thick. Not right? with these things. No? With an aluminum, yes. These things. The spring ice breakup is a funny thing. From the shore, you usually just see it break apart, pull back, and eventually disappear. But out on the water, it's a whole different ball game. Huge patches of ice can travel around, pushed by wind and currents, and show up where you least expect them. Okay. While early season fishing can attract lively and hungry fish, it can also attract trouble. Now you can tell, obviously, today there's lots of ice still in the lake. And you know what, it's breaking up, it's good. It's good for fishing, uh, pike get in the mode, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem is, this patch behind me right now is where we came through earlier. And now we can't get back through. You know, you'd think you can plow it maybe with your boats, but the problem is these cedar strip boats cannot take that ice. It's, believe it or not, it looks like skim ice is floating, but we've seen chunks today that's that thick. And it'll just blow these boats apart. There's a guy over on an island right here that the boys from the lodge came and just had to rescue. So he's punched his boat, probably punched a hole through it or ripped it apart or something like that. They've come to get him. What's probably going to happen is we're going to have to wait for those guys to get taxied back and they're going to come back and get us and taxi us back. So I've never had this before. Pretty wild. Get 
that's blowing me sideways. Wow, that was hairy. Good work, boys! I've done this before in other boats. I've never done it in a cedar strip, but I've never done it when I had to get home, get blocked in like this, so. You never knew you'd be an icebreaker today, did you? Bye bye, icebergs. At this point, there's nothing to do but head back to the lodge. I'll wait and see what tomorrow brings. Oh, you might not be able to see them right now, but trust me, there's mosquitoes out there just waiting to attack you. Now, even though the lake that Pete's on today is still partially frozen, he may be only days, if not hours away from a full-blown mosquito attack. Adult females can spend the winter months hidden in hollow logs or animal burrows. Mosquito larvae remain in the water where the cold puts them in kind of a hibernation until spring. And then there are the eggs, hidden individually in the soil waiting for warm, moist weather to allow them to hatch. That's why even when the bugs aren't biting, we still carry product that contains DEET, like muscal, because you never know when those critters are gonna wake up. With the ice on the lake still causing problems, I've decided to go after speckled trout, which gives the walleye and pipe water another day to warm up. I'll be joined by Eric Lund, who runs the lodge. He knows this stretch of the Essanagami River better than anyone. In late spring and throughout the summer, anglers can catch more trout, walleye, and pike here than they can count. It's also an incredible early season trout fishery with plenty of cold water brookies to go after when the walleye and northerns need a bit more time to get into bite mode. We just got here. I dropped a, watching my jig to see how it was. Uh, Want to bring him in head first like this or? Yeah, sure. Just anything's good. Like there. that, yeah. scoop. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and beautiful. gentlemen, I'll show that to the camera right there like that first. Oh, a beautiful brookie. brookie Another there. one close to the boat. I was sitting there watching, getting my jig all worked up. So, you know, okay, before we cast, let's get ready here. The first hole, first stop, Essinagami River, right? Yeah, this, this Essinagami is it? River. And, yeah. uh, and I'm just dropping down there, and boom, I hit a trout, and he got off. And then I just saw Eric do a drift, finish his drift, he cast away up there, finish it off here, and pff, might be the same fish. It's yeah, pretty close to him. Look at that, what a gorgeous yeah, looking fish. That is awesome. There you go. Eric and I were talking earlier about these trout, like brown trout and, and speckled trout in a creek. They're a very aggressive fish. They're not they're not always the finesse, the two no, pound test no. line or the fly fishing or whatever. These fish are, are predators in these river systems. So and they'll they'll smash a lot, right? They got they got teeth and they'll grab whatever they can oh, to yeah. eat. Although the speckled trout numbers swim thick in this river, you still need to coax them, especially in frigid water. Now they're talk about no finesse. Oh, beautiful it's, fish. It's uh braided braided line with a spoon. It's no wonder that's my dad's favorite fish. He used to fish the Nipigon River for those things. Gorgeous fish, man. This river is stacked with these things. Today we're using small jigs, spinners, and spoons in both subtle colors as well as very bright. Casts upstream are usually best, followed by slowly pulling your bait into and through current breaks and seams. Is that not incredible? It is. Wow. Nice. Th those spots, the little Blue, look at the yeah. blues on them. Yeah, they're just uh, one of the prettiest fish going. This one wants to get going. Nice. <laughs> Man, this is just the most, this is the most fun I've had fishing in a long time, buddy. <laughs> hanging on to tinsel now. There look at that. Look at, yeah, look at the difference, eh? Sometimes they're all kind of a different, different look to a lot of them. So neat. <laughs> I wish we would have kept count now on how many fish we got today. Oh, yeah. uh, we gotta be well over two dozen now. We wanna, they definitely have a big meal in mind. You look at the size of that brookie and the, that bait. Yep. It's, yeah, that's right. He's not a big brookie at all. There certainly is a healthy population of 15, oh. 16 inch uh, brookies today. Unreal. And this is, I mean, we're talking a cold front for sure that's in here, right? Yeah. The, the temperature's oh, yeah. gone down. It was nice a week ago. It's dropped right down again. Ice still up in the lake that's feeding this water. Look at that amazing color, folks. How is that for a God's creation? This is why we fish right here. Oh, there you go. That's a good fish. Whoa, nice. Oh my gosh, that's the bonus of the year for me right there. We're back on Esnagami Lake. The temperatures are starting to rise, and it looks like the walleye are starting to bite. Pan fryer right there. 
Well, this is a decent fish as well. Do you have a slot limit for eats or? Not up here. No, we no. just, uh, you can have one uh, in your limit of, say a regular limit of four, you can have one over 18 and then three under in your take home. And then the conservation is one and one. But since I've owned the lodge, it's, you know, it's over 20 years now, we've released all walleye 24 inches or longer. Good. As well as northerns that are 30 inches or longer. And uh, you know, those are the big females and spawners. And uh, that way we've been able to keep our fishery very healthy. Yep. And um, these are the kinds, if guests like to take a few fish home, that's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Keeps the lake forever. Builds the fishery. There we go. Not a bad oh, one. Oh, nice one. Not a bad walleye nice there. Let me put a net under that one. Sure. That's because it's your first big one. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> Bigger one there. Bigger oh, one, exactly. Real nice. That's a Did you want to get them off? You want me to get them off for you? No, oh, you can take them off. Sure, okay. whatever. I'm done. Oh, like they saved my minnow. Come on, you got to be kidding me. So far. Let's see how good you are. Very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keeping the minnow. <laughs> one thing about fishing in the north, like that right there, Eric, pump the motor out. So we had, we're getting close to the shore. He bumped the motor out. I made a cast out, but I, my jig was basically right under the boat. And I just left it there under a, you know, yeah. a motor working. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to scare them. That's a nice. No. No. Well, this is a really nice, yeah, very nice fish. Perfect size walleye right there. Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, the motor doesn't seem to spook them too much. Even, Even the, the trout stuff. That motor's there and they're right beside the boat. Did you know that early spring can offer up some of the best pike fishing in Ontario? Renowned writer, hunter, angler and outdoorsman Ernest Hemingway once told his son, you make your own luck. On Fishing Canada, we use this philosophy a lot. And it's definitely true in the early spring when ice has just melted on Ontario lakes. Looking for some luck catching monster northern pike? You can easily make your own by heading to the shallows of these frigid waters, particularly where streams and rivers enter the lake, creating nutrient-rich habitat. It's the perfect spot for both feeding and spawning. As an added bonus, the moving water from these inflows also attracts walleye, perch, and a host of other sport fish. A good fisherman knows that the fish won't come to you, but with a better understanding of Ontario spring fishing conditions, you'll know exactly where to go to them. It's all a matter of getting luck on your side. Just another reason to go fish in Ontario today. Little fella. Double hitter. All right. Doubles are good. I felt the teeth of a walleye there raking across. Dick, 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 dick. Yeah. A little starter model there. This feels better. Decent. I'm going to put that back yeah, before you see bad it. Fish. This is a pull. Yeah, it's a nice one. Really nice strong fish. Huh? Yeah, it's all it's just a stay down deep strong fish. Yeah. Not giant, but definitely likes to pull some line. Oh, awesome. Gorgeous fish too. Yeah. And beautiful. And they always look a little nicer when the sun shines. Oh them. man, that golden yeah. color on them. Look at that minnow. She's still hanging top. Now you were wondering how good I was. Yeah. There you look go. Look at that. Two You're gonna fish. get one more fish out I'm of that. I'm gonna get the rest. <laughs> There. Nice, nice one. Perfect. Nice, nice and chunky. Yeah, good looking fish. We, um, we're just basically not far from the lodge and we're just going out for a little foray to see what we can do. A fish though. Yeah. What is that? Definitely a spawning population in here right now, isn't there? Yeah. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh, you bugger. Uh oh. Points against Jarek. Yes. We may drift right on that and you pick it up. <laughs> Another half decent one Good I got. Fish there, yeah, nice. Well you're you got some uh, you got some reaction time, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's a good fish. Yeah, that's a nice one. Wanna handle that one? No, I got him. You got her? Yeah. Okay. I'll show you a nice isn't the Gambi Wally. That by the way is fish number three on that same minnow, my friend. Mm. Look at that. The lake is obviously loaded with them. Coming out for a little afternoon fish and popping these guys directly below the boat that fish was. We're in about seven feet of water right here. Yep. Shallow, nice warmer shallow. water. And his body is just cold. Beautiful. 
Hey, you little friend. Nice fish, Pete. Thank you. Oh, that minnow's done. Three fish that size on that minnow. There you go, kid. <laughs> the last half of the minnow looked horrible. Me again. Okay, it's time to ditch the ratty old stuff I'm hanging on to. And no, I'm not talking about Brad. He's great, but these old sleeping bags he's inherited from his mom have to go. I have no idea where they've been based on their age. I can only imagine. Also, they're flat as a board. I think all the stuffing's gone. I need a sleeping bag that can keep me warm at night if I need it. But I'd also like to use it on the hot nights too. Any ideas? Coleman has the solution for people that are tired of being too hot or cold while sleeping at the campsite. It's the multi-layer sleeping bags available in adult big and tall size. The multi-comfort sleeping bag is designed for any weather conditions and has layers so you can make yourself comfortable no matter the weather. The fleece blanket adds extra warmth on those cool nights and the lightweight sheet makes it easy to find comfort on those warm summer nights. The Traverse 4-in-1 sleeping bag has a durable cover with polyester liner and the removable lightweight sheet allows you to control your comfort. Visit ColemanCanada.ca for more outdoor solutions. And thanks for watching Fish in Canada. Oh, we got one. oh there you go. That's a good fish. Whoa, nice. Oh my God, that's the bonus of the year for you right there. Rarely is it a complimentary term to be called a slacker, but when you're fishing, you want slack line between you and the bait. Throwing one of those cigar baits, the famous walk the dog surface presentation, the only way you can do that is with slack line. Anytime you make a cast and you've got a straight tight line to your bait and you move it, all you're doing is pulling it forward. You hit it on slack and it goes back and forth, back and forth in that enticing action. So you give it a try next time you go out, you hit it on slack line and you become a slacker. I'm feeling a lot better now. With the walleye biting and the ice nowhere in sight, it's time to push on for some pike. I just know they'll be on the move this time of year and hungry. Still. Did he ever rail that fast? Yeah, that eh? one though. Yeah, chunky little fish. I got him. <laughs> I thought for sure I lost that fish. He hit it hard and then swam yeah. to the boat 100 mile an hour. Here we go. It's very neat. We come into this bay, looking around. Eric, this is one of Eric's early season bays. We started earlier with the walleye, it was 47 degrees. Yeah, the other day it was 44 degrees, 47 degrees. Right across the lake, 50, 50.7 here. That little bit, this bay holds a fish, so. Get over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh geez, you go. Oh, there you go. One. Come right up and grab it. Oh, nice going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that was awesome, one. buddy. That is a nice fish there. That is oh, a good one. Pete. Long, skinny. Maybe Pete. not skinny, maybe fat, too. Oh, it's actually a big fish. She's a nice fish. Look at that. Look at the, it's exploded the bottom yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, that was great call, nice buddy. Nice job. There's a guide for you. Saw the, si saw the uh, uh -oh. side of her out there and... Uh, the you want that cradle, don't you? Yeah, I'll get the cradle in a sec here. Just. And uh, you know, the thing that's important is you, you cast it far enough in front of her where you weren't yeah. gonna spook her. Yeah. So. I'm gonna try and bring her on the other side if, if she'll come around. Okay, sure. There. Whoa! There we go. Oh yeah. Now you got her. Nice. There we are. Get some draw spreaders in her. Right there, yeah, and, and I like that, perfect. <laughs> Nicely done. Okay. There we are. Here, I'll try to put a little grip on her. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Not bad. There's a... Okay, let's throw her back. That's the fun of spring pike fishing right there. Yeah. Oh. Saw that fish. Yeah. Great yeah. cast to it. Get a yeah, hey, see, you see what happened there? Where'd it go, buddy? You saw the fish? Yeah, I asked him where nice the head job. was, which the head was facing. He told me, so you cast to that side of the fish. We lost it in the in the waves or the shadow or yeah, something for happened a second, there. And then all so of a sudden, second, all of a sudden pfft, saw that big head come exploded. up. Exploded. Good eyeballs, buddy. Very nice. Today's hotspot is a pre-spawn stage area for Northern Pike in front of Jackfish Bay 
The waypoint on your screen will get you right there. Big fish will lay dormant in this area waiting for the exact moment that Mother Nature deems perfect for the trek into the shallows. By slowly running a number three inline spinner over these lethargic yet hungry beasts, an angler has a good chance of connecting with the fish of a lifetime. 40 plus inch pike are quite common in this area of the lake. For more hot spots like this one, check out fishincanada.com. After catching a decent pike in the bay and spotting a bunch of smaller fish, we decided to check out the slightly deeper water at the mouth. This time of year, pike travel back and forth between different temperatures of water. Eric said that traditionally the mouth of this bay is a pretty good pre-spawn staging area. Oh, definitely. Oh, buddy. Oh, that's, geez. That's a good fish, man. Uh, <laughs> get the cradle for that one. Yeah, he's Wide. fat. Not real long. Like, he's not a... No, but it's a... Lot, but it's like a fat fish. You want to get him now? Yeah. Oh, it's big. Oh, come on. That is a meaty oh, fish. Geez. That is oh. really nice. Got her? Hang on here. Oh, wow. Look at that, folks. Wow. Holy moly. What a beast. Can hardly hold her up. Got some nice pike scum on her. Whoa. Wow. That's probably... Bonus fish. That's a bonus fish, buddy. Come up here to speckled fish. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, I'm going to put her back. What a massive beast. Bye-bye. Oh, oh look baby! At He's the man. Nice job. He's the man. Way to go, Says Pete. the transition on the way in. They're either going to be way back in there on the drop or the transition coming in. Boom. <laughs> Buddy, that's a big fish. That is a we big didn't have fish. to measure well, that fish. Yeah, that that was, was a 40. It oh, was yeah. heavy. Oh, girth. Perfect oh, specimen. man. Yeah. So that's the, mo the bonus of the year for me right there. Go to speckled trout fishing and I catch a giant gator like that. Uh, Love it. To get to today's fantastic fishing location on Esnagami Lake, I took Highway 400 north to Highway 11. I then headed northwest to Highway 584 at Geraldton. From there, I drove north to the town of Nakina and finally took Cordingly Lake Road to the Nakina Air Seaplane Base. From there, I flew to Esnagami Wilderness Lodge. The Algoma region is famous for its incredible stretches of forested highlands, and for remote settings. Getting from point A to point B is usually gonna take you a while, but thankfully, the view is well worth it. This Ram truck is a great vehicle for exploring this area. After all, the attention to detail shown in the interior means that the long drives will be done in comfort, while the luxury features mean that the view inside the truck is also gonna be spectacular. With the amount of time that we spend on the road and in this truck, the comfort and style that the Laramie Longhorn offers is definitely appreciated. That's why for us, this ramp is perfect. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks. Nothing works harder than a ram. Stearns, trusted on the water since 1952. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. And Outdoor Canada. Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. A rock, a clam, what is that? I got a rock. That takes talent. That's the talented dude right there. Live release, as always. Oh.